Okay, welcome everybody. This is our final module of the term. And in this module, we're going to investigate the ubiquity of microorganisms and describe the role that they have in our environment and in our normal bodily function. Here you will study microbes by swabbing various areas and growing cultures on nutrient agar. Observations will be recorded and gram stains will be applied to collected microbial colonies. Microbes will be observed with both a magnifying hand lens and a microscope and you will draw conclusions about the thickness of peptidoglycan layers of observed bacteria. When you complete this lab you should be able to define the term microbe and give examples of organisms that are microbes. You should be able to differentiate between bacteria that are pathogens and those that are considered normal flora. You should be able to describe bacteria as cocci, bacilli, or spirilli. You should be able to describe the structure and function of peptidoglycan in bacterial cell walls. You should be able to identify why gram staining is a useful technique. You should be able to list the steps of gram staining and describe their purpose. You'll be able to collect microbes from common household or public areas using sterile technique and record observations of growing microbial colonies in agar and slant tubes. You'll also be able to prepare bacterial smears on slides and perform gram staining and investigate microbes using a magnifying hand lens and a microscope and draw conclusions about peptidoglycan in the cell walls of observed bacteria. This is a list of the deliverables. Make special note of the deliverables as posted on Canvas so that you can submit your items on time in order to receive full credit. You'll need the following. You'll have to supply bleach, a bottle of distilled water, a camera, either digital or through smartphone, a container of soap, matches or a lighter, a roll of paper towels, sealable plastic baggies, a sink with running water, a timer or clock with a second hand, and a warm incubation area either under a light bulb or on top of a water heater or in a warm windowsill. From the kit you'll need nutrient slant auger. These come in 6.5 milliliter glass tubes, blank slides, these are for your microscope slides, a candle T-size with metal casing, plastic 9 ounce cups, a sharpie, a magnifier, this will be your magnifying glass, a mask with ear loops, a pocket microscope, a pair of safety goggles, a pair of gloves, pipettes, empty short stem, a spatula, a staining tray, sterile swabs, two per pack, okay, a test tube with a clamp holder, an analog thermometer, and then from your gram staining bag, the gram staining solution number one, which is the crystal violet contained in a dropper bottle, gram staining solution number two, which is PBP iodine, also contained in a dropper bottle, and gram stain solution number three, and this is the decolorizer, also in a dropper bottle, and then the gram stain solution number four, which is the safranin, which is also contained in a dropper bottle. Now, um, each of these are going to be relatively small volume, 15 mils for solutions 1, 2, and 4, and 30 mils for solution 3. You'll also need access to a computer to upload digital camera images and basic photo editing software such as MS Word or PowerPoint in order to add labels, leader lines, or text to digital photos and a subject specific textbook. This would be uh, the lecture text or your notes from lecture to serve as background information on these experiments. Okay, welcome everybody. This is our last module of the term. This is microbes everywhere. And I want to go through the supply list with you. Materials that you'll be supplying include bleach, a bottle of distilled water, a digital camera or smartphone, a container of soap, matches or a lighter, roll of
fold paper towels or some trifold towels, sealable plastic bags, sink with running tap water, timer or clock with a second hand, a warm incubation area such as under a lamp or on top of a water heater or near a windowsill which has some sunlight. Nutrient Media Auger Slants, you'll see those here. They're labeled with refrigerate upon opening, but they're stable from 2 to 30 degrees. So it's nice to refrigerate them, but it's not absolutely necessary. Blank slides, and those are here. Okay. Microscope slides is what they are. Candle, T-size, with metal casing, that's your burner. 9 ounce cups, Sharpie to mark with, dual magnifier, mask with ear loops, pocket microscope, safety goggles which I have on, Gloves, which I have on. Pipette short stem. You can find those in the S bag. Spatula. Staining tray. It looks like a very short plastic cup, okay, but it's this little guy here. Sterile swabs, two per pack. These are basically long Q-tips. Test tube clamp holder. And an analog thermometer. Okay. So that's the equipment list. All right, so. So this is a picture of a typical bacteria with a flagellum for motility. Microorganisms, or sometimes termed microbes, are very small living things. Almost all microbes are single-celled organisms, but some are multicellular. An individual microbe is too small to be viewed with the naked eye and has to be observed using magnification. Common microbes typically belong to the kingdom fungi, which include molds and yeast, the kingdom protista, and the domain bacteria. Some organisms of kingdom plantae and animalia are also microbes, but most are larger microorgan microorganisms. Microbes are everywhere, but they have greater diversity and abundance on Earth than any other living organism. In the 1990s, a group of scientists led by William Whitman estimated the number of bacteria on Earth to be 5 nonillion, which is 5 times 10 to the 30th power, which is a lot of bacteria. Bacteria are vital to our planet, and they exist in nearly every location on Earth, occupying seemingly infinite varieties of ecosystems. There are an estimated 40 million bacterial cells in a gram of soil. Aerobic bacteria can only survive in the presence of oxygen, while anaerobic bacteria can only survive in the absence of oxygen. However, there are bacteria that can do both, and these are called facultative bacteria. Some bacteria have specialized features that allow movement, such as shown in the figure here with the bacterial flagella. This allows the bacteria to move from point A to point B. The human body contains more bacteria than it does human cells. Symbiosis is the close, long-term interaction between two or more species and can be either mutualistic or parasitic. In a mutualistic relationship, both the bacteria and the human benefit. Mutualistic bacteria are often referred to as normal flora, and they have a variety of functions, including aiding digestion and preventing the growth of other harmful bacteria. Some bacteria can cause disease in humans. These agents of disease are referred to as pathogens. E. coli is a species of bacteria that can play a mutualistic or parasitic role depending on the strain. E. coli constitute a normal, 
although relatively low percentage of normal gut flora. However, when a human consumes a harmful variety of E. coli, a serious case of food poisoning can be the result. You can see an example of E. coli in the figure. Some environmental locations, called fomites, host a greater abundance of human-associated bacteria than others. Examples of these locations include surfaces that are generally touched by human hands, such as money, doorknobs, handrails, gym equipment, elevator buttons, and vending machines. In general, areas that have the most contact with people and animals will have the most microbes. Microbial communities often include bacteria that are pathogenic. By pathogenic we mean capable of causing disease. The majority of bacteria are only a few micrometers long and are roughly classified into one of three basic body shapes. Cocci, which are spherical or oval shaped, bacilli, which are rod shaped, or spirillum, which are spiral shaped. And you can see examples of each here. Okay? Now to visualize these bacteria we have to stain them because if we were to look at these bacteria under a light microscope at the appropriate magnification the large majority of them would be transparent so there are a variety of techniques that are designed to add color to the bacterial cells we can then fix the cells so that they they're no longer moving they're easier again to identify and that allows us to classify them according to their shape, their clustering, and the type of stain that they pick up. The shapes of bacteria, whether they be cocci, bacilli, or spirilli, are determined by the composition of the cell wall. Bacterial cell walls are complex and typically have many layers. The peptidoglycan layer, which may be thick or thin, rests outside the cell membrane and has unique polymers that maintain the shape of the bacterial cell. Peptidoglycan is a major advantage to bacteria as bacteria often naturally occur in hypotonic solutions instead of water moving into the cell and potentially resulting in cell rupture and death these bacteria with the peptidoglycan can hold their own shape without rupturing. Thick and thin peptidoglycan layers are shown in this figure. Okay, so you can see here an example of thin peptidoglycan layers that we see typically in gram-negative bacteria and thick peptidoglycan layers that we see typically in gram-positive bacteria. Now, before we get into the gram staining technique, we should note that a gram-negative bacteria at the conclusion of gram staining will typically stain pink. Okay, pink with gram stain. While a gram positive bacteria will typically stain blue purple. So we can get a sort of a compromise color here. purple with gram stain. And the reason for this difference is entirely due to the composition of the cell wall in the gram positive bacteria. In the gram positive bacterial cell wall you have a much thicker peptidoglycan layer which has a tendency to trap the purple complex that results from the gram stain, whereas in the gram-negative bacteria, you're unable to trap that complex. The thickness of the peptidoglycan layer can be determined by a staining process known as gram staining. Gram stain bacteria with a thick peptidoglycan layer retain a purple stain and are called gram-positive, while bacteria with a thin peptidoglycan layer do not retain the purple stain but can retain a red stain and thus are called gram-negative. All bacterial species can be divided into one of these two groups. Therefore, gram staining is an important first step in identifying bacterial species 
and can lead to the treatment of bacterial infection. The process of gram staining is outlined here and is also described in the video content that's posted on Canvas. So you can see it's a relatively straightforward procedure. You want to take a, a bacterial sample. Uh, this can be from a bacterial culture, either liquid or off of agar, and you want to spread it relatively thin and then you want to heat fix it so that it is kind of attached to the slide and then you hit it with crystal violet which will turn everything purple initially and then you're going to add iodine which is what's called a mordant and what will happen with the iodine is that it will form purple crystals that will be trapped by the gram positive bacteria in their peptidoglycan layer and not by the gram negative bacteria. So again initially everything at this point will appear purple but when we hit the D-stain which is a, basically an, an alcohol based solution you're going to wash the purple compound off of the gram negative bacteria while the gram positive bacteria will retain it. So at this point the gram positive bacteria would be purple while the gram-negative bacteria would be transparent. And then, in order for the gram-negative bacteria to show up, we hit with a counter stain called safranin, which will stain the gram-negative bacteria pink. The gram-positive bacteria will also stain with the safranin, but the purple color will predominate when you observe this on a microscope slide, and as a result, they will remain basically purple to the naked eye. For any bacterial sample, the process for gram staining includes applying a series of four chemicals. This includes crystal violet, which is a purple dye, iodine, which is a decolorizer, or iodine, which is a mordant, and then a decolorizer, which is alcohol or acetone, and then safranin, which is the red dye, which serves as the counter stain. In between the addition of each individual chemical, the sample is rinsed with water. The final result is a bacterial sample that has purple gram-positive bacteria with a thick peptidoglycan in the cell wall and or red gram-negative bacteria with thin peptidoglycan in their cell walls. Consider the bacteria in this figure and determine their shape and whether they're gram-positive or gram-negative. So what you can see here is a combination of both types. You can see some purple bacillus and some purple cocci, right? And you can also see some gram-negative look like maybe cocci or bacillus interspersed. Okay, so what we have here is a bacterial community, and that's generally the case for an environmental sample. Okay, when we isolate bacteria from cultures, one of the things that we'll find out is that individual colonies that grow up on the culture media are founded by a single bacterial cell and thus should be of one particular shape and one particular gram stain type. So in our first experiment we're going to culture microbes. We'll select six areas to sample microbes. The samples will be cultured in slant tubes of nutrient agar and microbial growth for each sample area will be monitored for three days. You want to choose six places to swab for microbes and record a description of each location in data table one of your lab report assistant. Note that microbial growths often occur on surfaces that are regularly exposed to human hands like TV remotes, light switches, doorknobs, etc. Do not take cultures from people or animals as these might have a potential to be pathogenic or disease causing. Then use the permanent marker to label the six sterile slant tubes of agar 1 through 6 as shown in figure 7. Use an empty 9 ounce plastic cup to hold the agar tubes. So you can see here, we've got our labeled agar tubes, and we're ready to go. Next, you want to fill the second empty 9-ounce plastic cup with a small amount of distilled water. Put on a pair of safety gloves. Put on your mask. To collect swabs from the six microbial sources, identify from the instructions below. Swab only one source at a time. First, Use the thermometer to measure the temperature at the collection site and record that temperature in data table 1. Then locate a package of sterile swabs 
Each package has two swabs per package. Feel the packaging so that you can determine which end is the wooden end and which end is the end with the swab. You want to remove the swabs from the wooden end, so open that end of the package. Remove only one swab and allow the second swab to remain sterile in the packing until you're ready for your next sample. Dip the cotton end of the swab in the cup of distilled water to moisten it. Press the cotton tip against the side of the cup to remove excess moisture. Then rub the cotton tip over the entire microbial source. Do not touch any other surface with the swab. While still holding the swab, remove the cap of the corresponding auger tube. Hold the cap in one hand, making sure not to touch the inside as shown in this figure. Do not set the swab or the cap down. Quickly but gently rub the swab across the entire auger surface inside the tube as shown in the figure. Efficiency reduces the likelihood of airborne microbes entering the tube and contaminating your sample. Immediately replace the cap on the tube and set the tube aside. So we observe this procedure here. Okay, next Place the used swab in a sealable plastic baggie, adding a small amount of bleach to the baggie, as shown in the figure. This is to, again, to kill any microbes that might be on the cotton swab. Seal the baggie and reserve it for the disposal of the rest of the swabs. Next, repeat the microbial sampling for the remaining five areas. When the sampling is complete, the sealable baggie should have six used swabs, Dispose of the sealed baggie and its contents in a trash bin. Then, select a warm area to incubate the microbial cultures for 24 hours. For example, an incandescent light, as shown here, could be used to keep the cultures warm. Most ubiquitous microbes do well in environmental temperatures of between 37 degrees centigrade, which is about 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And the reason for this is that a lot of these microbes grow in or on the human body and that happens to be body temperature. Then after 24 hours of incubation, closely observe colonization and growth in the slant tubes using the magnifying hand lens. Do not open the slant tubes and record your observation in data table 2 of your lab assistant using the following as a guide. Use a digital camera to take a close-up photo of each slant Placing the tubes over a dark background allows visualization. Resize and insert the photograph into dated table 2. Refer to the appendix entitled Resizing an Image for Guidance Resizing. Then, determine what colors are present in the microbial colonies. Record the shape. Is there a pattern or shape in which the colony is growing? Or is the growth pattern random? Look at diversity. How many types of microbes do you see? Use your observations of color and shape to guide your assumption. Then, check for abundance. How many individual colonies are present and what percentage of the agar surface is occupied by microbial growth? If there are different microbes, estimate the percent surface area each microbe covers. Then, allow the slant tubes to incubate for an additional 24 hours. After the additional 24-hour incubation, look at the microbial growth in the tubes. If some of the cultures are not yet well developed, let all the cultures continue to grow an additional 24 hours, which will add up to 72 hours total. Record the total number of hours the tubes incubated in the first row of data table 3 of your lab report assistant. Record the observations about microbial colonization described previously in step 9 of data table 3. When the tubes have completed their growth, do not throw them away. Immediately continue to the next exercise, where we're going to sample the colonies and fix and stain them. The cleanup involves washing the plastic cup used for the distilled water with soap and water, then dry and keep the cup for the next exercise. Our first exercise is called culturing microbes. Okay, So you want to choose six places to swap for microbes 
Record a description of each location in Data Table 1 of your lab report assistant. It's important to note that microbial growth often occurs on surfaces that are regularly exposed to hands, such as TVs, remotes, light switches, doorknobs, etc. Do not take cultures from people or animals, as these cultures have a high potential for pathogens. Pathogens are disease-causing microbes. Use a permanent marker and label the six sterile slant tubes of agar 1 through 6 as shown in figure 7 in the middle of page 9. Use an empty 9 ounce plastic cup to hold the agar tubes. Fill the second empty 9 ounce plastic cup with a small amount of distilled water. Put on your safety gloves. To collect swabs from the six sources, follow the instructions indicated on step 8. It's at the bottom of page 9. Use a thermometer to measure the temperature at the collection site. Record the temperature in data table 1. Locate a package of sterile swabs, each package with two swabs. Feel the packaging so that you know which end is the cotton end and which end is the wooden end, which you will grip. Okay, You don't want to grip the cotton end because that's the end you're going to sample with. Tear the packaging near the wooden stem, remove one swab, and allow the second swab to remain sterile and in the wrapping until the next sampling location. Okay. We're now on page 10. Dip the cotton end of the swab into the cup of distilled water to moisten it. Press the cotton tip against the side of the cup to remove excess moisture. Rub the tip over the entire microbial source. Do not touch any other surface with the swab. While still holding the swab, remove the cap at the corresponding auger tube. Hold the cap in your hand, making sure not to touch its inside as shown in figure 8a. Okay, Again, that's in the middle of page 10. Do not set the swab or the cap down because you'll get contaminants on it. Quickly and gently rub the swab across the entire auger surface inside the tube as shown in figure 8b. This will reduce the likelihood of airborne microbes entering the tube. Replace the cap on the tube immediately and set it aside. Place the used swab in a sealable plastic baggie. Add a small amount of bleach to the baggie as shown in figure 9, which is at the top of page 11. Okay. And this is to sterilize the swab, okay, but to kill any microbes that are on it. Seal the baggie and reserve it for disposal of other swabs. Okay, so this is basically where you're going to put your, your disposables. Repeat the sampling procedure for your remaining five areas. When the sampling is complete, the sealable baggie will have six used swabs in it. Dispose of the sealed baggie and its contents in a trash bin. Select a warm area to incubate the microbial cultures for at least 24 hours. An incandescent light or a windowsill is perfectly suitable. The bottom line is that you want to have uh, a temperature that's close to 37 degrees if possible. Okay, um, That's about body temperature, 98.6. So warmer is better. And then you're going to let those guys grow. Okay, And then once that happens, okay, after 24 hours of incubation, we're going to pull those cultures and look at them. Okay? You'll photograph them with a digital camera and enter that information into the data table too. You want to know the color of the colonies that grow, the shape, the different types of microbes that you're able to see just upon looking at the auger slant and how abundant they are, how many individual colonies have grown up. Now, what is a colony? A colony is a group of microbes that were founded by a single cell that divided very rapidly. Many microbes grow so quickly that divide once every 20 minutes. So you can imagine how quickly this stuff is going to grow on what's called a nutrient media. And that's what these auger slants are. They're designed to let anything that can grow to grow. Allow the slant tubes to incubate another 24 hours. After an additional 24-hour incubation, which would be two days total, 
investigate the growth in the tubes. If some of the cultures are not yet well developed, let all the cultures continue for an additional 24 hours, which would be three days of incubation. Record the total number of hours that the tubes incubated in the first row of the data table three of your lab report assistant. Record the observations about microbial colonization as described in step nine of data table three. When the tubes have completed their growth, do not throw them away, immediately continue to the next exercise. Okay? Clean up will involve washing the plastic cup used for the distilled water with soap and water, drying it and saving it for the next exercise. And then you want to answer the questions that are on the bottom of page 12 and continuing on to page 13. Okay? So we'll begin with a demonstration of culturing. Okay? So we want to start by picking some areas, okay? And in this room, we've got door handles, we've got drawer handles, we've got keyboards, okay? All of these have come into contact with human hands. So those are all excellent areas for there to be potential microbes that we can culture and grow, okay? So we want to go ahead and set up our distilled water and our bleach. This will be the cup we'll use for our cultures. And it's a good idea to put your name on your cup and probably write down experiment in progress. So that's the cup for the cultures. And then we're going to have our distilled water cup. And you just need enough to wet the end of the swab. So you don't have to fill the cup all the way up with water. Probably if you get about an inch worth of water in there, that's going to be plenty for our purposes. And the reason you want distilled water is so you don't have any chlorine in it. The chlorine would kill the bacteria and anything else you might manage to culture likely wouldn't grow. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and label my agar slants as to the location that I want to take them from. Go ahead and open these guys up. And you want to write on the label, okay? And I'm going to put keyboard. I've got a drawer in here. I'm going to call this drawer or handle. And then I'm going to do the handle into the room on the door that entrance opens into this room. Okay, so I'll label that. Okay. That's why you want to use permanent markers so the stuff doesn't smear. Um, it's probably a good idea to take a sample from the cold water handle on the sink behind me, back sink. Wave power button. Do a 
another one for the incubator handle. Okay, those are my six locations. All right. So. When I rejoin you in just a minute, um, I'll show you how to swab and then um, ink, uh, the, spread your your culture on the media, and then uh, show you how to set it up to incubate it. Okay, so I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is record the temperature at the site. So you take the thermometer out. And you want to hold it as close to what you're going to swab as possible and get a reading. Okay, so this thermometer is a centigrade thermometer. And what I'm seeing here is about 24 degrees centigrade. Okay, so I want to go ahead and note that in my data table. And if you want, you can even record that on your culture, okay? You can write the temperature on the back of your slant, and then you can enter all the data at once when you're done. Now we want to go ahead and feel for the wooden end, okay? The wooden end is here, okay? My culture is here. And then I want to make sure and have a baggie with a little bit of bleach in it. Okay, so this is my baggie. There's my bleach. That's to sterilize the swabs. I'm going to kill any bacteria on the swabs. Okay. So I got my baggie here, my bleach. Okay. I've got the wooden end of the swabs here. So I pop this, okay, and then I want to unscrew the cap, okay, and hold the cap and the slant in my hand, take out my swab, dampen my swab, let the excess moisture roll off, okay, and then I want to swab the area, okay. So I'm swabbing here the cold water handle. Okay. And then I'm going to take that, plunge it into the swab, into the auger, brush it over the surface, okay, and then seal my tube up, put my swab in the bleach, okay, and then this guy's ready to incubate. So I'm going to go ahead and set him aside for now, okay, and then I'm going to repeat the process for the rest of the locations that I indicated and then I'll set these up so that they can grow for 24 hours and then hopefully when we come back to look at them uh, we'll have some colonies to take a peek at okay okay welcome back um, our cultures have been growing for the prescribed amount of time and I'm happy to say that we do have microbial growth in almost every single culture and so, starting with step 11, at the top of page 12, it states that after 24 hours incubation, observe colonization and growth in the slant tubes using the magnifying hand lens. Do not open the tubes and record your observations in data table 2 of your lab report assistant using the following as a guide. First, use a digital camera to take a close-up photo of each slant, placing the tubes over a dark background to allow better visualization. Resize and insert the photographs into data table two. Refer to the appendix entitled Resizing an Image for guidance in resizing the image. Note what colors are present in the colonies. Note their shapes. Is the growth pattern random or does it seem uniform? Note diversity. How many different types of microbes are you likely looking at? And you can base this again on the color and the shape and the texture of the colony. And note the abundance. How many actual colonies do you see? 
what percentage of the agar surface is covered by growth. If there are different microbes, estimate the surface area each microbe covers. Allow the slant tubes to incubate another 24 hours, and then after 48 hours, look at the growth in the tubes. If some of the cultures have not yet developed, let all the cultures incubate up to 72 hours. Record the total number of hours that the tubes incubated in the first row of data table three of your lab report assistant. Record observations about microbial colonization as described in step nine in data table three. When the tubes have completed their growth process, do not throw them away. You want to continue to the next exercise. The cleanup involves washing the plastic cup used for distilled water with soap and water, drying and reserving it for the next exercise. Okay, So <clears throat> what I have here are my different cultures, Okay, and I can describe to you what I see in each one. Okay, I have the first culture here um, from the door to this room, and what I see against a dark background are several small opaque cultures. Um, I would count here uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 small opaque, one large opaque, and one white colony towards the top of the tube. Okay, and I would note that again in the lab report assistant data table. Okay, so that is the door handle to this room. The next one is the keyboard of the computer, and surprisingly, there is no growth of any kind. The next is the microwave power button, and here I see colonies which are, again, uh, opaque, and if I were to count, okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Forty-five small opaque colonies, one large opaque colony. Okay, and I would record those numbers as well. Okay, this is the um, handle for the ice machine in this room. And again, I see here almost uniformly small opaque colonies. Okay, and I've heard a count. say 30 small opaque colonies here. Okay. This is the handle to the cold water in the back of the room. And again, I see multiple small opaque colonies. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Fifteen small opaque colonies, one large opaque colony. This is the drawer to one of the drawers in the drawer handle to one of the drawers in this room. And here I see, let's see, looks like two small opaque colonies, one large white colony, and about 15 very small opaque colonies. Okay, so again, note the size, note the color. Note the texture. All these colonies appear smooth on the top. Okay, and that can be relevant because that can be an indication of what kind of microbe we're talking about. And what I'll do is um, I'll show you pictures of these uh, in just a minute so that you know uh, what I was able to grow up. Now, that may not necessarily reflect what you grow up when sampling um, your different areas of the room for microbial growth. Okay. And uh, once we do that, once we record our information in data table two and data table three, okay, 
Um, we'll want to move on after answering the questions at the bottom of 12 and 13 to the next exercise, which is gram staining the bacteria in these different cultures. Okay? So I'll join you in just Okay, the next exercise involves gram staining. In this experiment, we'll transfer bacteria from the slant tubes to a microscope slide. Then we'll prepare each sample with gram stain and observe the microbes using a pocket microscope. Again, to protect yourself from possible pathogens, wear gloves and a mask when performing this exercise. The stains in this exercise permanently stain counters, clothes, and skin, so cover exposed areas with newspaper or another covering. So begin by finding your permanent marker and labeling four blank slides A through D as shown in the figure. Select four microbial growths from your sterile slant tubes that you used in exercise one. You may select unique growths from the same slant tube or growths from different tubes. Record the slant tube number and a brief description of which colony you will sample in data table four of the lab assistant. For example, on slide A, you may wish to observe a colony from tube two and a particular colony may be yellow and circular. Okay, so you want to note all of that. Next, use the permanent marker to label a 9 ounce plastic cup bleach. Prepare a bleach solution by placing two tablespoons of bleach in the cup and filling the cup 5 6 full with tap water, as shown in the figure. This solution is used in the procedure and it can also be used to clean any surfaces that might have microbes on it. Next, use a match or a lighter to light the tea candle. Put on a fresh pair of gloves. Locate slide A and move it near the candle. Use the short stem pipette to place a single drop of distilled water in the center of the slide as shown in figure 13. Pass the spatula over the flame two to three times to sterilize it. Ensure that the spatula does not touch any surface and remain sterile and allow the spatula to cool for a few seconds. And the reason you do this is so that you don't fry the bacteria on your spatula. Okay, because you're going to use this to pick up bacteria from your colony and then spread it around your slide. Next, Open your sterile slant tube with the first microbial growth you're going to look at. While holding the cap in the slant tube, insert the spatula into the tube and collect a small sample by lightly touching the spatula to a small section of agar. It's not necessary to dig into the agar. This figure shows you an appropriate approximation of the technique. Millions of bacteria can fit on the head of a pin as a result, a smaller sample will reduce overcrowding of the bacteria on the slide, allowing for more improved observation of individual microbes. You then want to recap the slant tube. Next, transfer the sample to the slide by mixing the bacterial sample onto the drop of water in the slide. So what you're going to do is agitate the colony into the liquid in order to more fully distribute it. Okay, so this will be your, your first colony from your first slant tube from the designated location that you chose. Set the slide aside in a safe area where it won't be disturbed and let it dry. And the reason you do this is so the bacteria will fix to the slide so they won't basically roll off during the staining procedure. Next, dip the spatula in the bleach solution and stir it around as shown in the figure. Wipe the spatula on clean paper towels and then dip the spatula in bleach and wipe it on the clean towels. This is again to remove the bacteria from the previous colony. Rinse the spatula in tap water, wipe it with a paper towel, place the used paper towels in the trash, and repeat steps 6 through 11 in your protocol preparing smears on slides B through D. Okay, so again, you're going to note the the slant tube you took it from and which colony you selected okay based on the colony color the colony shape okay and the colony percentage after the slides have all air dried 
Heat fix the bacteria to each slide using the candle flame. Grasp the edge of the slide with a test tube clamp and pass the slide over the candle flame four times as shown in the figure. Heat fixing will kill any live pathogens and also help the bacteria stick to the slide. Now, one of the things that you'll note when you watch the, the video of me doing this is that um, there, there will be a little soot on the bottom of the slide and that can impede the passage of light through the slide when you observe the results of your staining. So what you want to do after you heat fix is take a small tissue or paper towel and then wipe the soot off the bottom of the slide so that you can easily see the bacteria on the surface. Next, get a timer and then using the four slides and a staining tray get a roll of paper towels and a gram stain experiment bag and move the equipment near the sink with running tap water. In these steps you're going to do a gram stain on each of these slides A through D. You'll add two to three drops of each chemical, allow the chemical to rest on the slide for a specified period of time and rinse the slide with running lukewarm tap water. Before beginning, read the steps and organize your workspace. Perform the following steps for each slide. First, place the slide in the staining tray. Now what is the staining tray? It's this sort of round plastic, looks like a short plastic cup. Okay. Then add two to three drops of crystal violet, which is gram stain number one. Wait one minute. Gently rinse the slide with lukewarm tap water until no purple stain washes off and return the slide to the staining tray. Make sure that all stains rinse directly into the sink otherwise the stink will be stained. Now in the event that the stink, sink does stain you can rinse the stain down the drain with alcohol. So if you have some rubbing alcohol or um, any other um, alcohol based solution you can use that to remove the stain from the sink in the event that you don't hit the, hit the drain dead center. Next, add two to three drops of PVP iodine. This is gram stain number two. Wait one minute. Gently rinse the slide and return it to the staining tray. Then, add two to three drops of decolorizer, which is gram stain number three. Wait 30 seconds. Gently rinse the slide and return it to the staining tray. Then, Add two to three drops of safranin, which is gram stain number four. Wait 30 seconds and gently rinse the slide. Then allow the slide to completely dry on a clean paper towel. Okay, so you can see what the stain will look like once you've completed. Okay, so you can see sort of some indication that the stain adhered to material on the slide. What you're going to do next is try and take a closer look and identify the individual bacteria according to their shape and their color so that you can categorize them. So once the slides have completely dried, place the slides over a white surface for observation. A white paper towel or a white sheet of paper works well. Use the magnifying hand lens to observe each slide. In data table 4, record observations in the column titled observations with a magnifying lens. Record whether or not the bacteria were present, provide a description of the color of the stain, and whether the bacteria were gram positive or gram negative. So what you'll be looking for basically are areas of pink or purple staining. Okay, That'll tell you that you have material on the slide that was able to stain. Now this won't tell you whether it's bacilli or cocci or spirilli. Um, you're going to have to determine that by looking at the slide through a microscope. Okay. Next you want to examine each slide with a microscope. Focus the slide at the lowest magnification and observe the slide with the highest magnification available. It's very important to note that slides with bacteria would typically be observed with a high power microscope which isn't part of your kit. As this experiment is designed to provide practice with gram staining you're using a 200x microscope to observe the stained slides. As a result, it may be difficult or impossible to see the bacterial shapes on the slides. You may simply see stained areas. In data table 4, record observations of the microbes on slide A. If possible, 
indicate if a particular shape of bacteria was present. If your sample is particularly crowded, you may need to observe the edges of the sample to see individual microbes. Then use a digital camera or a camera phone to take pictures of the slide. Refer to the appendix entitled Taking Microscope Photos for guidance with taking microscope photos with a digital camera. Resize and insert the photograph into data table 4. Repeat steps 17 through 21 for the remaining three slides. Record your observations for each slide in data table 4. For cleanup, place the slant tubes in a sealable plastic baggie. Add a small amount of bleach to each baggie and seal it closed. Throw the baggie and the entire contents into the trash. Use a paper towel and bleach solution in the cup to clean all surfaces that may have come into contact with microbes and wash all the equipment with soap and water and return it to the kit to use later. Okay, stay tuned to, to watch this procedure in action. I thank you for uh, listening to the podcast today. This brings to a close our series of experiments. Hopefully this has been useful and educational. Remember, if you have any questions, make sure to contact me through the portal or by email, and I'll be happy to answer uh, any points of confusion you might have. Thanks for listening. Okay, welcome back. Exercise two involves gram staining bacteria. Okay, and so what we're going to use here are the microscope slides and the microscope slide box. I'm going to open this up and we want to get out four slides. Obviously, any broken slides you want to make sure and put them in the trash. And it says you want to use a permanent marker to label the slides A through D, as shown in Figure 11, which is uh, towards the top of page 14. So we'll go ahead and do that. marks in the upper left hand corner on the top of the slide. Okay. Then in step two we want to select four microbial growths from sterile slant tubes from exercise one. You can select unique growths from the same slant or growths from different slants. Record the slant tube number and the description of the colony that you got it from. It's a good idea to probably put that on the slide, okay? Um, and then you're going to obviously note this in the lab report assistant as well, where you actually got the sample from. Use the permanent marker to label a 9-ounce plastic cup with bleach and put some bleach solution in it. Um, you'll want two tablespoons of bleach in the cup, filling the cup about five, six full with tap water after that. As shown in figure 12, this can be used um, to clean up any surfaces that may have had microbes on them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, label our bleach cup here. Okay. Now you don't want to get bleach on your clothes because it'll um, cause the colors to fade. This is one of the reasons why it's a good idea, if you can, uh, to wear an apron okay, or some sort of uh, protective material over your clothes while you do this experiment. Okay, so I'll go ahead and fill this with bleach. About two thirds full is fine.
Okay. Then we want to use a match lighter to light the tea light candle. And this is can be this can be found in your S bag. Okay. So your S bag contains a variety of things. Okay. It contains um, pipettes. It contains your candle. It contains balloons. Contains some thread. Okay, so there's our tea light candle. Make sure that the wick stands up. Okay. If you want, you can put it on the aluminum stand that also comes with the kit. It's not a bad idea. And we want to go ahead and light it. You can extinguish your match in the bleach solution, that's fine. Okay. And then once the candle's lit, you want to take your spatula, pass it over the flame two to three times to sterilize it, as shown in figure 14. Make sure that it doesn't touch any other surface and remain sterile, and let the spatula cool for a few seconds, and that's so that you don't kill the bacteria colony that you touch. Then you want to open the slant tube with the first microbial growth that you see. Holding the cap and the slant tube, insert the spatula into the tube, select a small sample of agar using figure 15 as a guide. There's millions of bacteria on a head of a pin, so a smaller sample will reduce overcrowding on the slide and allow improved observation of the microbes. Okay? So you can see at the top of page 16, how they want you to sample. Okay? You'll transfer the sample to the slide by mixing the sample with a drop of water on the slide and then set the slide aside in a safe area where it won't be disturbed and allow it to dry. Then you're going to dip the spatula in the bleach solution to kill the microbes, wipe it clean on the paper towels, dip it back in the bleach, wipe it on the clean towels, rinse the spatula with tap again, and wipe it so that you don't have bleach on the spatula when you go for your next sample. Place the used paper towels in the trash and then repeat steps 6 through 11 preparing bacterial smears on slides B through D. After they've air dried you want to heat fix them using the candle flame. Grasping the edge of the slide with the test tube clamps pass it over the candle flame four times as shown in figure 17, which is at the top of page 17. Heat fixing it kills the pathogens, kills the bacteria basically, and helps them adhere to the slide. So it helps them stick. Okay. So to do this, um, we're probably going to want to do a, a close-up here. All right. So I'll zoom you guys in and I'll show you how to do how to run the culture. So I'll join in just a second. Okay. Now, I've put my mask on just to be safe. Uh, that's mostly for the bleach fumes and so that I don't um, contaminate my samples. But I wanted to show you my samples so that you can see what they look like. Okay, this is the sample that was from my uh, cold water handle. Okay, and you can see the colonies here, the little white opaque colonies that I was referring to earlier. Okay, so that's an example of what microbial growth should look like. Here's another example. Uh, this is the drawer handle from one of the drawers in here. And again, you can see some microbial growth there. Okay. This is the door handle to this room. Okay, and you can see microbial growth there as well. This is the computer keyboard, and oddly enough, no growth, no visible growth anyway. Kind of interesting. This is the microwave power door handle. And you can see, again, growth on the slant. Notice again, colonies of different sizes and different colors. Okay. And this is the ice machine handle. And again, you can see microbial growth here as well. Okay, so first thing we want to do is go ahead and you see my bleach here. Okay, 
there's my candle all right so I'll go ahead and sort of move these so that they're easier to maneuver here I'm working with a relatively small area for you to see there's my spatula okay I'm going to go ahead and move the spatula from its plastic wrapping and I'm going to use the, the the round end of the spatula you could just as easily use the square and the reason I picked the round end is because I think it's probably easier for um, me to pick off a single colony using the round end okay and the other thing that we want to note all right is that we want to go ahead and probably write on our slides ahead of time where we're getting our sample from okay so I've got my first my slide a here okay and I'm gonna write on the right hand side um, 108 door handle okay and I'll put small opaque colony SOC so that I have some idea and it's probably a good idea to also put the date okay so I'll put today's date on here okay and so there's our slide all right with our information let me give you a white background so you can see what it's supposed to look like hold it against the paper towel here so that it shows up anyway you can see the description there on the right side of the slide that's your left and you can see the letter designation in the upper uh, right hand corner that would be your left okay so separate them out and in the middle is obviously going to be where the sample is going to be applied okay so there's my slide okay now I want to go ahead and you want to have your your culture tube in one hand you want to have your spatula in the other okay so the idea here is essentially to flame your spatula let it cool okay and then you're gonna get a colony and then smear it on the slide along with a drop of water okay so that's one other thing that we need for this is one drop of water on the slide in order to be able to spread it out so we have some water right here okay and we can use one of the droppers to apply a drop of water to the slide doesn't need to be a whole bunch of water just a small drop is good okay so just plunk the drop right there okay now we're going to go ahead and flame our spatula tip okay this is to get any other microbes that might mess things up off of here and then we want to let it cool for a bit because we don't want to cook the bacteria when we touch them okay we don't want to hear a sizzle when we go into the agar all right so now we're unscrewing and I'll move the flame out of the way for now okay and the bleach so you can see okay so we unscrew the cap and then we're just going to go in hold the cap out okay we're going to go in and sample one of the colonies okay so I went for the one of the small opaque guys okay and I'm just going to agitate him into the water okay like so and then you want to put the cap back on dip this guy in bleach to kill anything okay 
and then repeat the process for the next slide. Okay, so we can set this aside for now, and we can go ahead and finish the rest of our cultures. Okay, you can even leave the spatula in the bleach as you pull out the other slides and label them. Okay, we'll do the uh, ice machine handle next. So this happens to be slide D, but it doesn't matter. Okay. So there's the ice machine handle. Okay. Now you want to remove it from the bleach. Okay. You want to wipe it off with a paper towel. Okay. And then it's a good idea to give it a dip into some water. Okay, so if you want, you can have a you can have some water here. And just enough to dip about maybe half an inch of the spatula in because that's all that's going to come into contact with the colony. All right? So dip that in some water. Okay, as to get the bleach off, you can dry the water off. Okay, and then we do the sterilization again on the flame. Okay, so there's our flame back again. Pass through, pass through, get it hot, kill those bacteria, let it cool, okay. We want the ice machine. That's the keyboard. The microwave. That's the ice machine right there. Okay, so we've let this cool. Now we're going to go ahead, again, uncap it. Hold the cap in your gloved hand. Notice I'm gloved and I've got my mask on for this. And I'm going to go in now and I'm going to go after some of the small opaque colonies okay set my culture aside and then we can use our dropper just put one drop of water right there approximately in the middle of the slide and then again, agitate the colony into the water. Okay. It's a relatively thick colony. There we go. The more you spread it around, the better off you're going to be seeing individual bacteria cells. Okay. okay here we go. Can we get it all off. There we go. You see all that white material there. Again, the more spreading, the better we're going to be. Okay, cool. It's not perfect, but we'll take it, okay? And then again, dip in the bleach to kill any bacteria. Wipe it off. Dip it in the water. And then dry it, okay? And now we're ready for the next culture. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for my remaining slides, okay? And then I'll join you when we're ready to stain. Okay, welcome back. Um, the samples have dried. It takes a while for them to dry. You might be waiting 15-20 minutes uh, depending on how big your drop of water was. And you want to make sure and heat fix them once they've air dried so that they don't um, 
end up washing off when we do the staining procedure. And so that's as easy as passing them under the candle and that's, that'll heat fix them. But one of the things that you'll notice when you do that is that you'll get some soot on the slide and you can see a little bit of the soot here against the background of my glove. Okay, But you can wipe that soot off with a paper towel and you'll want to do that so that the light can pass through the slide and you'll be able to see your specimen. Okay, so now you can see here that the soot is gone. Okay, same slide. You can see the dried material from the slide. Now, once we've heat fixed and air dried all these, we can go ahead and blow out our candle. So we've blown out our candle, we've allowed it to cool, and now we've got our samples heat fixed and ready for the gram staining procedure. Okay, so there's my first slide, my second slide, again notice that I, I got the soot off by wiping the, the bottom of the slide, my third slide here, okay, and you can see where the dried bacteria are, and my last slide here, okay. Now, the next thing we want to attempt is the gram staining procedure which is listed on page 17 and in order to do this you need to find the gram stain kit okay so that's the gram stain kit and it's going to have several components crystal violet safranin decolorizer and iodine. Okay, so you can see all these here. Line them up so you can see them. So three dark bottles, one light one. Okay. Now, in order to do this properly, you don't want the stain to be on the specimen too long. So these are time steps you'll have to stain them, time them, and rinse them, and then go on to the next portion of the stain. So, starting with um, page 17 on step 14, I've got a, uh, a timer here, okay, so that I can keep track of how long the stain's been on the sample. And you've got your four slides. You'll want some paper towels and you want your staining tray which is this item here okay put it back here so you can see it those are the stains and that's the tray okay and the procedure is relatively straightforward you put the slide in the staining tray you're going to add two to three drops of crystal violet okay and so the crystal violet is this purple material here. Okay. Wait one minute and then rinse the slide with lukewarm tap water until no purple stain continues to wash off and then return the slide to the staining tray. Then you want to add two to three drops of PVP iodine. That's the gram stain number two here. Okay. Wait one minute, gently rinse the slide and return it to the staining tray and then add the decolorizer here okay wait 30 seconds rinse the slide and return it to the strip to the tray and then two to three drops of safranin here okay wait 30 seconds and rinse the slide allow the side to completely dry on a clean paper towel and then you're going to observe it okay now, the idea behind the gram stain is that you're going to distinguish bacteria based on the composition of their cell walls. Gram-positive bacteria are going to stain purple with the gram stain due to the arrangement of their cell walls. Gram-negative bacteria are going to stain pink. Okay, um, A lot of times gram-positive bacteria are often pathogens. Gram-negative bacteria um, are 
can be pathogens but are frequently non-pathogenic. And so if you've done the gram stain correctly and you have a variety of bacteria growing in your cultures, you should see some gram positive and gram, gram negative bacteria once we observe under your pocket microscope here. Now, a couple of words about the microscope. Um, make sure and check that the AA batteries are functioning. And you also want to make sure that the contacts are good so that you are able to get the light to turn on. So you can see here by flipping the switch I can turn the light on and off. And then there's also a uh, magnification selector on the front, okay, which you can slide in order to decrease or increase the magnification. And then you've got a focus wheel here okay, on the side, which you can turn in order to adjust the focus at different magnifications. Okay? Uh, the focus wheel is best turned, uh, put your hands on both sides of the wheel and turning it. So I had to actually play a little a bit with the contacts on the scope in order to get the light to turn on. Um, just make sure that uh, you're making good contact in order to visualize your bacteria. Now, um, you could try, and I've seen people do this, take a digital photo through the microscope with um, a camera phone. Uh, if you can manage to pull that off, that's great. If not, um, just sketching what you see would probably be um, a useful approach or describing it. Um, either way works. We do want to take photographs of your stained slides and you can observe those through your magnifying glass. Okay, Remember your magnifying glass that you had out here um, and you can see some blue and pink staining masses for bacteria that didn't get um, dispersed adequately Okay, using the magnifying glass but the microscope is going to be the final word on this. So what we're going to do is um, move over to the sink, and um, I'll run through a gram stain with you, and um, then we'll see what we can see. Okay, so I'll join everybody in just a few minutes. Okay, we're ready for our first gram stain, and I'm going to start with slide A and work down. So you want to go ahead put the slide in the staining tray okay and then we're going to apply the crystal violet and then wait one minute so we put the crystal violet on we start the timer You notice I've got the lukewarm tap water running. Okay, that's one minute. Now remove the slide and you're going to put it in the sink and then gently rinse until no more purple is coming off the slide. So you can see here that we've already got a nice little purple spot right in the middle of the slide. Rinsing till no more purple comes off. Okay, and then we can return the slide to the stain tray next thing we want to hit it with is um, the gram stain number two. Okay, So that's the iodine. So you want to cover the same area with the iodine that you did with the first gram stain. And then you want to go 30 seconds.
I'm sorry, we want to go one minute. Stop, take it out, rinse it, okay, return it to the staining tray, and now we want to add two to three drops of decolorizer and wait 30 seconds. And you'll notice with the decolorizer that some of the crystal violet is going to start to run a little bit, and that's to be expected. The iodine, which is the second stain, is a mordant, and it's used in order to fix the, um, the purple crystals within the cell walls of the gram-negative, or I'm sorry, the gram-positive bacteria. Stop. Stop. Here we go. And rinse. Now you don't want to decolorize too long or you'll decolorize everything. Okay, and then the last step is two to three drops of saffronin and then wait 30 seconds. Saffronin is kind of a, a brick red. And the purpose of the saffronin is so that the gram negative bacteria will show up. If we didn't add the saffronin, you would only see gram positive bacteria on your slide. Okay, stop, clear. And rinse. And off we come. Okay. Then we want to dry the slide on a paper towel. Okay. And then we'll repeat this procedure with the remaining slides. Okay. So I'll join you guys uh, once that's done. Okay. Welcome back. Now, once we've completed the stain, okay, we go to page 18, and you'll note that I've got my slides here on a paper towel. Okay, we're almost completely dry at this point, but you can see that there's some material that's stained with the saffronin and some material that we're going to find out looking under the microscope that also stained with the crystal violet. Okay, so we want to put this on a, a white background so that we can make some observations with the magnifying glass. So a white sheet of paper works just fine. Now a couple of things to point out during the gram staining procedure. Um, the de-stain you have to be a little bit careful with because um, it's alcohol based and it could cause your markings on your slide to rinse off okay so be aware of that but anyway there's my there are my slides okay and you want to take a peek at them through the magnifying glass this is your magnifying glass and note any observations okay and what I see is I see some 
some red and some purple staining material on just about every slide okay and one of the things that you'll note is that um, the purple staining material um, tends to uh, stick more in the clumpy areas all right so just be aware of that um, that's what we call non-specific binding and that's not necessarily indicative of um, the type of microbe you have there okay so magnifying glass make your observations you want to record those observations in data table 4 under observations with the magnifying lens record whether or not bacteria were present and provide a description of the color and the stain and whether the bacteria were gram positive or gram negative now again um, in my observations I see purple and re uh, red staining material looking at each of these slides so um, it's entirely possible that there's both gram positive and gram negative bacteria in those stains but we're not going to know until we look under the microscope remember this is your portable microscope okay you want to go ahead and uh, turn on the light so click that on and then you're going to take a look at each slide start with the lowest magnification you have okay which is going to be on this uh, microscope 160x so you're going to crank the the slider all the way down to the bottom and then you're going to put the slide this way okay put it under the clips the idea is that the clips hold the sample in place okay and try and put the staining region where the lights gonna be and then you're gonna look through this and you're gonna try and focus to see if you can see what are gonna look like very small flecks of of purple and or red okay now this is the trickiest part um, when you use the microscope one of the things you're gonna find out is that um, it can be difficult to know when you're actually focusing on the the surface of the slide and when you're focusing towards the back of the slide so what I'm going to do is make a recommendation here and what you can do is take a um, just take a sharpie alright and put a line right next to or you can even put it at several points right next to the area that's stained and when you're focused nice and sharp on that line you know that you're in the right plane of focus for your stain okay so I'm gonna slide this back under here see I've made four little black tick marks okay and I'm gonna move around until I can manage to locate a tick mark under the scope and then we're going to try and zoom in and see if we can see anything again using the magnifying glass or the microscope rather okay so let's go up 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 okay there's some staining material I want to get to where I've got a a black tick mark right there we go there's one of my little indicators okay so what I found is I found one of the marks I've made with my sharpie and I'm going to focus on that until the edges of that mark are really distinct. And then I know that I'm in the plane of view where I can see my stained material. Okay. And so I'm looking now and I can see, uh, I can see bacteria. Okay. Or at least large groups of bacteria. I don't know that I can see individual bacterial cells at this point. All right. But we can now increase the magnification and 
and see if we can pick anything up at the high end of the range for this scope and I can see some blue staining material I can see some saffron and stair we go there's something okay All right. And I can play with this a little bit. All right. I definitely see bacteria. Um, as to whether they've picked up the stain, I see some gross morphological evidence that they have. But like I said, I can't see individual bacterial cells. I can just see clumps of bacteria, okay? But still, that's sufficient for the purposes of this lab, okay? Um, again, make observations with the scope if possible. Um, if your sample is particularly crowded, you may need to look at the edges of the sample to observe the microbes. Um, using a digital camera, or a phone to take a picture of the slide, refer to the appendix entitled Taking Microscope Photos for guidance with taking microscope photos with a digital camera. Okay, so the idea here, again, is to, to try and put your, your digital camera, um, line it up with the ocular, okay, and then get it into focus and take your snapshot and then resize the photograph, put it into data table four, and repeat for the remaining slides. And then when we're ready to clean up, you want to make sure that the slant tubes are in a plastic baggie. Add bleach to the baggie and seal it closed. Throw the baggie and the entire contents into the trash using paper towels and bleach in the cup to clean all surfaces that may have come into contact with the microbes. When you're finished uploading the photos into your lab, lab report assistant, save your file, zip it up so that you can send it to me uh, as a small file. Refer to the appendix entitled Saving Correctly and the appendix entitled Zipping Files for guidance. Um, and uh, that will be the form in which you'll be able to upload it properly to Canvas. And then you want to answer the questions that are on page 19 at the bottom. <clears throat> okay, and in your lab report, obviously, you're going to include um, your <clears throat> your tables. All right, you've got data tables one through four. Okay, make sure and fill those out completely. Make sure to answer the questions on page 25, on page 27, and then submit your report. Okay, that does it for the, uh, the last podcast of the term. It's been a pleasure having you with me, and I will hopefully hear from you in the near future. Uh, remember that all this material is fair game as far as the final lab practical goes, uh, so make sure and review my comments to your posts as well as my comments um, with regard to your your um, Canvas surveys um, in order to prepare for the final practical. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know, okay? Um, I can't stress how important it is for you to um, go back and review all my comments with regard to every experiment that you've done in order for you to successfully navigate the final exam same advice um, that I, I give for the midterm, okay, which is that everything we've done in here is fair game with regard to procedures, with regard to background information, and um, with regard to experimental results, okay. So uh, make sure, review that material. If you have any questions, let me know, and it's been a pleasure having you.